The first question that I want to address is what exactly is HDR photography? Well, we know that HDR, the term itself, stands for high dynamic range. But what does high dynamic range photography exactly refer to, or what does it mean? In order to understand this term a little bit better, it's important to understand how our camera sees the world versus how we see the world with our plain yet our amazing eyes. First, let's take a moment to discuss how we see the world with our eyes. Now, I assume that most of you are probably watching this DVD indoor in front of a computer, unless you happen to take your computer outside or your laptop, in which case you're enjoying post-production pie and the sun, which is awesome. Two for one, guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So let's talk about what we see inside this room. So inside of a room, we're gonna see bright areas of the room, which are basically where our lights are. It could be a window light. It could be a floor lamp. It could be a ceiling light. It doesn't really matter. We'll see these bright areas simultaneously. There's also gonna be dark areas of the room where the light isn't following. These are gonna be our shadows. Now our eyes are incredible because we can actually see detail in both of these areas simultaneously. We can see the detail in the highlights or in these bright areas where these uh, lights are. We can also see detail in the shadows where the lights are not falling. If we were to move outside for a minute, our eyes are going to adjust and once again, we're going to be able to see all the detail in the sky, the clouds, the sun shining through. In addition, we'll be able to see all the detail in the harsh shadows created by the sunlight. We can see, you know, cars and anything that's basically has its back to the sun. We can still see detail in that person's face. This is because the dynamic range of our eyes is extremely broad. In fact, our eyes see a total of 20 stops or an estimated 20 stops of dynamic range. What does 20 stops mean? Well, it doesn't really matter what it means. Just know that it's a lot. We'll talk about it in more detail later on. So if our eyes can see up to 20 stops of dynamic range, what would a DSLR be able to see? Now, presently, based on the cameras that are available, most cameras are gonna have a range between 10 and 14 stops of dynamic range visible in one single shot. What does that mean? That means that essentially we have to choose because a camera is only gonna see a portion of what our eyes can see. Let's talk about what that means. So if our eyes are seeing this entire 20 stop range, Either we kind of focus the camera, let's say the camera can only see 10 stops. Well, the camera is gonna either see 10 stops of the brighter stuff and it's gonna leave all the shadows out, or it's gonna see 10 stops of the shadow stuff and leave all the brighter stuff out, or you're gonna go somewhere in between where you can see 10 stops and the brightest stuff will be gone and the darkest stuff will be gone, but you'll get somewhere in the middle. So what is this gonna look like in camera? Well, I'm sure you've all had this experience where basically you arrive at a beautiful vista. It could be on a cliffside overlooking a canyon. It could be in front of a beach uh, overlooking a beautiful sunset. And you say to your spouse or your friend, hey, go stand over there. I'm gonna take a beautiful shot with you and the sunset Set or you in this canyon and your friend is backlit by the sun meaning that the sun is coming towards the camera your friend is looking towards the camera so you're actually shooting towards the shadows because your friend's face is all in shadows what ends up happening well of course either you see your friend and you can actually see his skin uh, because the image is very bright and what happens in this situation is the background goes completely white or you can see detail in the sky and you can see the sun and it looks beautiful but your friend or your spouse is in complete black now, most likely your friend or spouse is not gonna be happy with the shot and they're gonna wonder why you're not very good at photography. And at that point, you're gonna to turn to them and say, look, the dynamic range of my camera simply is not broad enough to capture this scene. Actually, don't say that because they're gonna look at you like a crazy person and be like, why is he talking to me like this? <laughs> or is she talking to me like this? Either way, you know it's because the dynamic range is limited. So while our eyes can interpret that information and we can see the sunset, we can see that beautiful backlit scene and the subject's face just fine, the camera's only gonna see one of those. Either we choose the background, which is gonna be super bright, or we choose the foreground object, which is in the shade, which is gonna be very dark, and that'll blow out the background so we can't see it. So this visual range is referred to as dynamic range. If our eyes can see 20 stops and our camera can only see a portion of that, it can only see 10, well then to shoot high dynamic range photography or HDR photographs, 
simply means that you're extending the 10 stops beyond what the camera would normally see. You're shooting a higher dynamic range. Now, how exactly would we do this? Well, there's actually two ways. Without adding any additional light, we can capture higher dynamic range images via two methods. Now, method number one, nobody's gonna like because it's a, a pretty terrible method. And that method actually involves going out and buying a new DSLR because new DSLRs, they're always coming out with new sensor technology and these newer sensors can actually capture a broader dynamic range straight out of the camera. For example, currently a D800 can capture 14 stops of dynamic range, whereas a Canon 5D Mark III, and these are both supposed to be equivalent cameras, a 5D Mark III can only capture 12 stops of dynamic range or around that area. So basically switching cameras, switching to this other model would give me two more stops of dynamic range present. I'd be able to see two extra stops of detail in highlights or in the shadows or wherever I choose. But let's say that we don't all want to go out and purchase new cameras. Well, how then do we increase our dynamic range? So option number two means that we're going to be using a photographic technique known as bracketing. This is where we shoot the exact same scene in three different exposures. One dark exposure, one middle exposure, and then one bright exposure. We're gonna combine all three of these exposures into one single image, which is gonna broaden the dynamic range of our overall scene. So let's go on now to the next video.